and the logic is working because Alicia's agreeing with me. So apparently no one else who's had an event like yours is advertising it on the net tonight. That's the way it looks, but invisibility is an idea that's out there in a big way. People are into this. This hypnotist, the one who's writing about these people who claim they've gone invisible, she says people have been working at becoming invisible since about 700 BC. Listen to this from some ancient writer in India. Concentration and meditation can make the body in impredictable to other men, and a direct contact with the light of the eyes no longer existing, the body disappears. That's what's happening to me, except I didn't sit around chanting or praying. I just went to bed, and when I got up, all gone. The computer keeps humming, and the two of us sit there silently thinking, thinking together. Bobby? Emily? It's Dad yelling. Dad's tone of voice makes us all rush for the parlor. Mom and Mrs. Van Doren get to the front of the house before Alicia and I do. Dad's on his feet pacing, and when Alicia and I get there, he stops and looks at me. I feel really stupid, Bobby. I didn't pay any attention to the information about your room. And then five minutes ago, I mentioned it to Leo, and he takes one look at your data chart, and bingo, he hits on something. Dad's beaming at me, but he's too excited to stop for more than a second. He turns to Mom. Now, Emily, I'd like you and Julia to go up to Bobby's room and get his electric blanket, the blanket itself, and the controller, and all the wires. And don't bang the controller or drop it, all right? And, Bobby, I want you to go down to the basement and find my old oscilloscope. Leo and I will try to find something else we need, which I think is in the kitchen. Okay? Let's go. And everyone scatters for the treasure hunt. Find Dad's old oscilloscope. That's not a job. It's more like a career because of our basement. Alicia follows me halfway down the stairs. You'd better stop there, I say, and she does. Okay, the oscilloscope is a boxy thing about as big as a small suitcase. has a round green screen on one end, and there are wires and knobs and switches all over it. In most basements, not a problem to find. Down here, big problem. This basement is the kind of place archaeologists dream about. I'm looking at a 20-year history of the technological revolution in America. Alicia sits down on the steps. What do you mean? I mean, our basement is a high-tech junkyard because my dad can't bear to throw anything away, especially not something electronic. That's because if you're smart enough, you can look at anything and think of 20 or 30 possible ways that it might be use of, useful at some point in the future. So you just keep it. Now I'm picking my way around the heaps and piles and sagging shelves. I look around, and I see about 12 different generations of CPUs three or four black and white monitors, two old color monitors, an original Macintosh, six different computer game systems, an ancient tube radio, a little box of broken Walkman tape players and radios, three fax machines, a bin of outdated telephones and cell phones and beepers, and four TVs. And hiding here behind the shipping box for an ancient IBM wheel printer, the oscilloscope. Got it. It's heavy. And as I move to the stairs with it, Alicia gets to her feet and I follow her up to the kitchen. Dad and Leah are pawing through a mound of paper on the breakfast table, the contents of three or four fat folders from the cabinet above the wall oven. That's where Dad sticks the information sheets and the instruction booklets and the warranty information whenever we buy something. So there are instruction manuals in there for everything from the garage disposal to the new inkjet printer to the bike I got for Christmas when I was seven. And Leah grabs something and holds it up. This is it. It's the information that came with my electric blanket when it was new. Leo's excited now, flipping through the stapled pages. And we're in luck. Here's the schematic diagram. Alicia makes a face. What's that? Dad's looking over Leo's shoulder, and he says, The schematic diagram shows the electrical details. It's like a map of how the electricity flows, and it shows impedance and resistance. The voltage at different points, any motors or capacitors, transformers or resistors, things like that. One of Dad's degrees is an electrical engineer. Alicia nods and I can tell from her face that she's into the spirit of the hunt, tilting her head to listen as Dad starts rooting through the kitchen junk drawer. With a little aha, he grabs a small screwdriver set and says, I think we have everything now. Then Mom and Mrs. Van Doren come down the back stairs with the blanket, and we all follow Dad back to the front parlor, me still lugging the oscilloscope. Alicia's father studies the diagram while Dad unscrews the metal bottom of the blanket controller. He looks up and says, M? Would you plug in the scope? So I help Mom get the cover off the oscilloscope and find the power cord. Mrs. Van Doren says, what are you looking for, Leo? Her husband glances up from the diagram. Flaws. We want to see if this controller unit is working right, because if it's not, it could be generating an unusual field. A field? He looks back at the diagram, nodding. Electric 
blankets always create an electron field of some sort because you can't run power through 10 or 12 yards of wire without causing an electromagnetic disturbance. The question is what kind of disturbance and what magnitude? 